I enjoyed talking to Dan so much that I asked him to stay and give me some tips. So this is part two of our interview with Dan Smith, author of I Swear the Snook Drowned, and columnist of Fishing with Dan at the Hometown News. Thanks for giving me some extra time, Dan. I think I told you when, I, when we first started talking that I grew up in Florida and used to fish with my dad. I left, um, but came back to Florida and uh, took my daughter fishing and taught her everything I knew, which yeah. was not very much. Yeah, well, and I'd like to, to go fishing, but there's so much I don't know. Um, I can't identify the fish that I cut, yeah. um, and I don't know where to go. I, I, you know, I, t I don't have a boat, so unless I charter or go on one of the fishing charters, I tend to, to go hang out at a bridge. <laughs> well, that's, that's all fine. Uh, so, on the way here, I passed over on the causeway at Dunlawton, and uh, uh, there was several people fishing and having a good time. I enjoy. I love to see people out fishing and having fun. That's what it's here for, and you can enjoy it. It's uh, we, as I say when I write my column, uh, I've spent nearly 15 years writing that column about seven or eight fish. That 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 translates to columns, you know, hundreds and hundreds of columns about the same seven or eight fish that we normally catch all the time. Try that sometime, that's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be redundant, you can't help it. But uh, uh, some of the things, I, I'll just I'll just give a few, uh, a few tips on some of the things that are, uh, seem to be a big problem for the newcomers or beginners. People move here from up north and they've heard all about saltwater fishing, but they've never had the access to it. And the first thing they believe is that they've seen all the film and they think you have to have very heavy tackle. No, not if you're gonna fish the inshore. If you're going offshore on a deep sea boat, you'll need heavy tackle. But to fish around the bridges and docks and piers around the river, lighter tackle the better. Most of the time, uh, people will eventually figure out that you're going to use lighter tackle here than they did in the freshwater up north. Very light tackle. I use, in my everyday fishing, I use a seven foot light rod with a number 25 reel, which is only about that big around, just a very tiny little reel, and 10 pound test line. Myself, I don't use a leader, a lot of people do use a leader. But, uh, Trying to, trying to convince newcomers to get away from all the steel leaders and the red beads on the, on the, and the two ounces of lead at the bottom and the, and the, and the fishing poles that are thicker than my fingers and, and big, big, thick fishing poles. Trying to get them away from that is difficult because all their life they've saw magazines, we've seen where people were using heavy tackle. And heavy tackle has its purpose and its place, but if you want to fish the inshore, which is where most of our really good fishing is here, the redfish, the trout, the flounder, the snook, it's all in the inshore. And you're going to need to switch to lighter tackle, and it's not, uh, it's not an easy switch. Most people have difficulty with that. And sometimes they'll switch to lighter tackle and still have heavy line. And the line, if you have light tackle, you can't use. 10 to 12 pound is too heavy, but 12 pound, no heavier than 12 pound test line for sure. And I use, uh, if I use any weight at all, uh, I'll, I'll use a little split shot, just uh, one, one sixty-fourth of an ounce or something like that, just very, very small. Um, for bait in the inshore, everyone needs to start with shrimp. Dead shrimp, live shrimp, any way you do it. Everything in the inshore eats shrimp. And uh, you won't go wrong with that, but uh, as you get a little more sophisticated and time passes, you'll figure out different ways of doing it. Live mullet, of course, most of the time you'll have to catch your own live mullet, but uh, that requires a cast net. If anyone is in the long haul is going to be a successful inshore saltwater fisherman, you really need to learn to use a cast net.
cast net is where you can get your own bait, which is nice because it saves you money. But you have fresh bait at hand all the time, and you don't have to worry about trying to keep them alive overnight and all that sort of thing. But uh, so the light tackle is the first thing that you need to worry about is switching, getting rid of the heavy tackle, and save it for the surf. If you want to use heavy tackle, go out and fish on the beach. But in the inshore, which is the Indian River, Tomoka River, Spruce Creek, uh, the places in Mosquito Lagoon, Mosquito Lagoon is a world-class destination for inshore fishing. Uh, light tackle is the way to go. Now, another point that people don't understand who just move here, most of our finest fish in the inshore in Volusia County are caught in three feet of water or less. Wow. Very shallow water. No, it's, no one can get their head around that when they first get here. I couldn't either. I was the same way. We all started the same way. But uh, you'll find eventually that uh, the big reds, the big sea trout, uh, snook, those kind of fish are generally found in very shallow water. But uh, that's a hard, uh, hard uh, transition to make people. It's so easy just to pull up in deep water, drop the anchor, drop the lines over the side. In shallow water, you can't sit in one spot, you have to keep moving, either push pulling the boat or moving it with an electric trolling motor. You need to be quiet, so you can't be, you can't make a lot of noise in shallow water. The fish are very spooked, but that's where the big ones lurk. They're they're in there catching bait and deep. But uh, those two points for beginners in Volusia County, uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't get any better tips than that. That that's what I I stress that all the time in my column, and then people still write me and ask questions on how to go about it and where to go. Uh, I love it when people people write in my column. They'll they'll write me a note and say, "Where can I catch a snook?" <laughs> well, yeah. snook snook are game fish, and they're one of the most desirable fish in the world. Central America, actually, it's an industry there, tourist industry. People come from all over the world to Central America to fish for snook, and we're fortunate here to have them but we're on the very northern edge of their range. They're, they're not a cold water fish. We're right at the point, when you get past Matanzas Inlet, which is about 30 miles north of the Volusia County line, you'll seldom see snook. That's, the, the water's just too cold. They can't take the freeze. But uh, people ask me where to catch a snook, and I, I don't want to be condescending or anything, but I'll say, Geez, you know, if I knew where that snook was, I'd be trying to catch it myself. Because <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> they're not that easy. Exactly. You have to put in time, you have to gain some talent in order to become a su successful snook fisherman, redfish fisherman, trout fisherman. You have to gain a little talent. You have to know the movement. You have to, you have to know the, the bottom and what's there, what to look for. And, uh, and most of the time, you need a boat. To do those kind of things. No, if you now, don't you, have a boat, well, you can fish. You can fish around the bridges. is always It's always good. Under the bridges, around the bridges, around pylons, people's private docks. Those are all good public public fishing docks that are in the parks. That's always good. You want to. You want to always fish when the tide is moving. Dead tide happens. You know, uh, four times a day. You don't want to fish when the uh, when the tide has stopped. It's it's, uh, it's fishing's poor at that time. But luckily, it, it only lasts for 30, 40 minutes in a period, right. and it picks up again. Doesn't matter if it's going in or going out, just so long as it's moving. Now, one other thing in Volusia County that we have, <coughs> excuse me, is we have a great uh, wintertime shrimp. Uh, uh, shrimping area, uh, Edgewater and Oak Hill. You can go down there in the wintertime at night. You have to do it at night, and you have to do it only on the outgoing tide. You have to pay attention and, and uh, find somebody who will alert you to what the tide is. 
But you go there with lights at night and, and some fine mesh dip nets. The last time I went, the limit is 20 gallons, which is about 22 pounds. Wow. And I got those in about two and a half hours. Wow. So it's well worth your time. And it's fun. Yeah. Like, like all fish, it's fun. But uh, uh, I haven't done it in a couple of years. I've taken a couple of years off, but I'm rigging my boat right now for when fall kicks in. It's beginning about the, toward the end of October. I'll be at Edgewater and, and the Oak Hill at night dipping shrimp. There is a shrimp dipping club, if you look on the internet, in Oak Hill, and they will tell you all you need to know about how to do it. it, it there's, a, there's a, like any fishing, there is a knack to it, and there's right. a little talent you need to have, right. but and, uh, know the area. But uh, you can catch shrimp here as well, and uh, Volusia is uh, famous for that, and people come from all over the state to do it here. But uh, Catching, catching our uh, our most famous fish, which are snook redfish and trout, and flounder to some extent. Uh, you need to you need to get light gear. You need to fish shallow water. You need to gain a little talent. It takes a little time. As I always say, you have to be a student every time you go out, or if you're fishing from a dock, wherever you're fishing from. Uh, you gain a little knowledge. Pay attention to the surroundings. What's happening? Right. What's causing fish to bite? Think about it a little bit. Why are they biting? Or why are they not biting? And what the do they want? Why did this fellow over here catch a fish and I didn't? Right. What was he doing that I wasn't doing? And, uh, and learn. I, I'm older than I'd like to admit, but I'm learning every day. Every time I go out, I learn something. You know, I'm a student of, of the wildlife. So, and okay. everyone should be. Have you ever thought about uh, opening a fishing tour guide service? I served as a guide for a short time, uh, but I found out that was work. <laughs> True. <laughs> I, I, I did pretty well with it, but I, I found out that there was work involved, and uh, I'm more for, more for the fun than I am the work. And uh, uh, now I'm too old at this point, but. Uh, uh, we have a great cadre of guides here in Volusia County, professional guides that'll take you fishing, and they will teach you on one trip what tackle to use, what bait to use, and where to go. You can't beat it if you're new to Volusia County and uh, hooking up with one of our guides and uh, let them let them take you fishing for a day, and you'll see some of these things I'm talking about: the light tackle, the shallow water. That's right. where they'll take you. But uh, uh, we're very fortunate here. We have a, a, a lot of professional guides who are very good. They're all very, very good. Now, how would one go about finding one of these professional guides? Uh, the best way to do it is, is you have to consider where you want to fish. You want to fish close to home, you want to make a drive. Uh, most of us are close to water in the eastern part of the county. We're close to salt water wherever we live. And there's freshwater guides in the western part of the county that'll catch speckled perch and largemouth bass. But uh, it's a good good idea to stop in the bait shops. Okay. If you have a favorite spot to buy bait, and stop in and ask those guys where uh, who, the, who their guide is they recommend. Uh, different guides. Uh, we have guides that work uh, the southern end of Mosquito Lagoon. We have different guides that work the northern end of Mosquito Lagoon. We have guides that work the Tomoka River and Tomoka Basin up north of Ormond Beach and on up, on up the river. And uh, they all kind of stake out their territory. But there are, we have, I don't know, I don't know, it'd be hard to, I, I know we have a hundred guides. Great. But we have a lot of them. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go fishing. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. I hope everyone fishes and everyone enjoys it. And my uh, my six-year-old grandson right now, uh, they live on a lake and uh, and uh, he's 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 learned how to walk out on the dock and take his little Snoopy pole and and, and pull in bluegill and catch them and release them and turn them back and he's having a ball. But that's how you start and eventually. You'll uh, you'll get into finer things. I've kept my family fed. Uh, people ask me, "Can you eat the fish out of the Halifax and Indian River?" And of course you can. 
But uh, I've kept my family fed with first class seafood for low these 50 years around here and uh, hope to do it for many more. But uh, it's here for the taking and uh, it's very supervised and the, the state the state sets the limits, and if you obey those limits, it's a renewable source. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's, there's, a, you're not harming the environment at all. Fishing is an eco-friendly thing to do, and uh, the fish, uh, the fish are renewable, and they come back. And I, I, there's probably as many fish here now as when I moved here back in the late '60s. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm looking forward to going out fishing again. You want to do that. You want to do that. Thank and, you very uh, much for coming by. That's my pleasure. I enjoy it. I can always talk about fishing, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Catherine.